Welcome to Christianity, Islam, and America. I'm your host, Pastor Joseph, right here with the Trinity Channel. I'm so glad that you're watching our program because you're about to see some material that you're unlikely to see anywhere else on broadcast TV dealing with uh, the hot topic of Islam, Christianity, and America. Of course, the idea of the two largest religions in the world, Islam and Christianity. Christianity first, and then second, Islam. And the clash of civilizations that we see. Uh, the political correct uh, narrative that uh, Islam is a religion of peace, and, and yet we see terrorism around the world committed in the name of Islam. Islam uh, stands behind a veil a veil uh, of secrecy when it comes to the West. Uh, truly, in America today, so few of us uh, know anything about Islam. Most of us know virtually nothing. And unfortunately, we cannot find uh, true, objective truth about the religion in our education systems, uh, in the media, certainly not. And unfortunately, not even in our government. And really, sadly, sometimes not even in our churches. But here at the Trinity Channel and our program, Christianity, Islam, and America, we are committed to exalting the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name above all names, exposing false religions, and Islam in particular. You're about to see a clip that we recorded here at the Trinity Channel a few years ago, a wonderful program, a debate rather, uh, with uh, some top Christian apologists and with some Muslim apologists, a couple of whom I understand are uh, have serving time now in a prison in the United Kingdom, uh, for some ties or support for ISIS. I'm not quite sure, but nevertheless, uh, they not only uh, preach their view of Islam, but apparently uh, they acted upon it. That's Anjum Chowdhury and Mizana Rahman for the Muslims debating Jay Smith and Don Deal, two great Christian apologists. Dr. Jay Smith, I should say, an aspiring Dr. Don Deal. He may in fact have his PhD when you're watching this program. They're asking the question about the history and origins of the religion of Islam. When you study and apply the criticism to Islam and the Quran and the historical person Muhammad that has been applied to Jesus and the Bible and Christianity for the last oh, few hundred years, you find that Islam does not stand up so well to Western criticism. As a matter of fact, we know very little about Islam outside of the sources of Islam for the first 200 years after the time when Islam began or supposedly began and Muhammad supposedly started the religion. So you're going to be seeing some debate here. You're going to see the, the Christians asking the Muslims to provide references, to provide proof to the historicity of, of the Quran, the Quran that Muslims claim today is the only Quran in the world, and yet the more that we do research, the more that we find there were many Qurans, even in the Arabic language. Uh, and so the claims that Muslims have been putting forth and the attacks that they've been making against the Bible, there are many Bibles, there's only one Quran, uh, we know everything about Muhammad, but Christianity has been obscured. When we investigate the history of the, of the religion of Islam, we find, unfortunately for Muslims, that it simply does not stand up to any test of history that uh, folks would recognize. The purpose of this program, of course, is to point out error uh, in false religion and to exalt our Lord Jesus Christ. We're all about doing that at the Trinity Channel, www.trinitychannel.com. So, get ready. Call a friend, call a neighbor. Hey, you may want to call a Muslim. If you know them, call Christian friends. Call everyone you know. Tell them to tune in right now to this program because you're going to be amazed, shocked, maybe even disturbed, but I pray also blessed as you see Christ exalted in this clip that we're going to watch right now. And uh, Jesus was not crucified. He was taken up. You know, Don and Jay, you know, this is something that you're going to have to swallow. The Christianity that we have today, unlike the preserved Islam and the preserved Sunnah of the Prophet and the Quran, you know, it's a mixture between what uh, Saul said when he became Paul. He was an arch enemy, remember, of Jesus before. And what King Song Constantine added, you know, things like eating pork, not, not being circumcised, changing the Sabbath, you know, uh, to a Sunday, the idea of priests forgiving you. All of these things were added. You know, the Christians, you know, need to look at, the, look at the falsehood of the ideas that have been presented as Christianity. The reason why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came, one of the reasons why 
is to correct the fallacies that were prevalent at that time, the mistakes that had entered into the divine scripture, you know, the, the Injil, the Bible, the Torah, they are preserved on the divine tablet. But the, or Allah or God did not preserve them in this world. You have to accept that fact. But the Quran was preserved in this life as well as on the divine tablet. And if you look in the Quran, you will see the true teachings of Jesus and the true teachings indeed of all of the prophets of Allah. And you know, I will say to you that, um, you know, when you look at the authenticity of the Quran, you know, we only have one Quran, but you know, if you look at the Bible, written over a thousand years, you know, you can't even agree how many books you have in the Bible. The Catholics say 76, the Protestants say 66. You know, you say Jesus is God, but you know, in Mark, God prays. How can he pray? Who is he praying to? You know, he can't do miracles. He doesn't know when the end of the world is. What kind of God is the one who forgets? He doesn't know everything. So, you know, I think you're confused as Christians. Before you start pointing the finger at Muslims, you need to get your house in order, really. And I would say to Jay and Don, you still have an opportunity. I know, Jay, you're getting old a bit, you know. I think you're about 62 years old. But there's still time for you. You can take your shahada. People on this program can take their shahada. They can become Muslim. You can join the one and a half, two billion Muslims around the world. You know, you can save yourself from the hellfire. Islam is the truth. I think we've proven this on this program. You have nothing more than I think somebody may get from a, one or two trips to the library. You know, we, we study Islam in depth. I don't expect you to understand the sciences of hadith. Therefore, you repeat the same kind of ideas that seconds. many people repeat. But really, they have no water. They hold no water, Jay and Don. Don't rely on the contemporary books of people who have this hatred towards Islam. Look at the sources. You'll find something beautiful, something miraculous. Inshallah, if Allah guides, he will guide you to Islam. Okay, moving on. Thank you, Anjan. Moving on. Sorry to, to cut you off there. Okay, Jay, we've got three minutes. The clock is starting when you start talking. It's so good to have Anjan on. I love, I love his, his uh, humor. Uh, he asked me to accept Islam, and yet he hasn't proved one of our points tonight. Uh, he has constantly run away from the historical argument and run back to his traditions and has run back even bringing up Gospel of Barnabas, that erroneous, fraudulent piece of literature that no scholar would accept today. Um, he talks about how that Saul made into Paul, that Paul created much of Christianity. Um, Paul just explained it and it applied it better, much like the traditions explain what the Quran says. Talking about Constantine, how that Constantine is the one who created Christianity as well. Listen, I don't go to Constantine. I don't, I don't go to Moses. I don't go to Abraham. I go to Jesus Christ. That's why I use the name Christian. We are followers of Christ, and I don't follow any other person but Christ. I don't need anybody else but Christ. I certainly don't need Muhammad, especially when you haven't yet tonight proved that he was the man of history. He, you've only proved he is the man of your faith, all tabulated two to three hundred years after the fact. And that's what we keep coming back to. It's like a broken record because you haven't yet shown us any historical artifacts or any historical documentation that can support these teachings. Even the teachings of Jesus, you say, are so much more comprehensive in the Quran. Take a look at the 93 references to Jesus in the Quran and you will see that they're all borrowed from Gnostic writings, from the Nag Hammadi Gospel, the lost books of the Bible. These are Arabic Gnostic writings. It's not the Jesus I know. These are the writings that begin to appear in the 2nd, 3rd, 4th century. They were not part of the earliest manuscripts for one very good reason. They were written much too late by people who did not understand or even agree with Jesus. It's fascinating that it's those documents that make their way into the Quran. It's fascinating that it's a sectarian, not only the sectarian documents that make themselves, but also the Jewish apocryphal writings. I could list a whole slew of them, don't have time to do that right now. And that's why we're asking, if those you are listening, if you really want to know truth, please don't go on just what Unjem or I are saying today. You go back and you look at these two books. Look at the Quran and look at the Bible and you do a comparison. Unpack both and you will see this is the bigger the better book. This is the one we always go back to. Anjum Chowdhury is absolutely dependent on this book for everything he believes. And he's absolutely dependent on Muhammad for the model for everything he does. We pretty much today have not only knocked the foundations of historical historicity for this book, but also the foundation for the historicity of Muhammad. Asking simple questions. When was this book written? Show us the documents. Asking, when did Muhammad live? How do we know anything about him? Seconds. When you look at this book, it all comes home to this book. We know who Jesus is. This book is all about Jesus, and we offer Jesus to you. He is the historical character. He was God who became man. Come on home. Come on back to Jesus. 
Praise the Lord. We hope you are enjoying today's program, which is just a small sample of our treasure trove of classic Christian apologetic television broadcasts. ABN and the Trinity Channel have been producing world-class Christian apologetic programming for years, featuring the world's top Christian apologists. If you would like to see more of our programming, you can watch the Trinity Channel live 24-7 at www.trinitychannel.com. Please pray for us to persevere in exposing false religions and lifting high the name of Jesus. And if you would please let others know about our ministry. And now let's get back to our program. I think it's absolutely clear that the Quran was uh, written down contemporaneously in the time of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's something that we talked about today. This is well documented. The main preservation, in fact, of the Quran was not even the fact that it was written down, but the memorizing of the Quran. This is something that the Arabs at that time were very famous for. They used to uh, have poetry competitions. They used to memorize things. The memorizing of the Quran is something that has taken place. And continues to take place. That is why thousands, even millions of Muslims today know the whole of the Quran from cover to cover. And that is the best proof of the Quran that over one and a half billion people only have one version of the Quran. As uh, my brother Mizanur Rahman said, you know, there are thousands of versions of the Bible. That means that it's, it's being changed. And if we look at the hadith of the Messenger Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, any student of Ulum al Hadith will tell you. Bukhari, Muslim, Ibn Majah, Nisai, Tirmidhi, all of the collectors of Hadith. The reason why they came, you know, or they were around the second, third generation, etc. is because they traced the chains back to the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they, 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 it was the era in which the science of Hadith was laid down. But the narrations were from the time of the Prophet and the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, the first three generations. And we mentioned many Sahifa, many documents and scriptures, even from the time of the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa So I don't know if uh, Jay or Don are trying to deny the fact that Muhammad even existed, sallallahu alayhi wa or the Quran was uh, ever around. Obviously, I would say that sanity is a blessing from Allah. You know, we need to be sane. And, uh, you know, I mean, there are still some people who believe, for example, that Adolf Hitler is alive and living on a B-52 bomber on the moon somewhere. You know, I mean, it may be that Jay and Don believe things like that. But in the real world, the Quran does exist. The Messenger Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa is the Messenger of Allah. And, you know, our question uh, to the Christians is, you know, why, why did Jesus come? You know, the Jesus that you believe in. Is he really the son of God or did he come to the children of Israel to correct the misconceptions that entered into the religion at that time? And was Jesus sent for the whole of mankind or only to the people of Israel? Did he really die on the cross or was he taken up as the Muslims believe? You know, it's a challenge for all of the Christians really to, uh, you know, and they are tested. Don said, you know, why exactly was these, were these uh, things mentioned, for example, in the Bible? And, you know, who changed them? This is a test really for the, for the Christians. You know, we are all tested. Faith is about belief, you know, and believing and having uh, trust in Allah. So sometimes, you know, you need to challenge your misconceptions and believe, you know, in the truth and give up the fact that, you know, you have something which is being preserved. Everybody knows the, the Bible is not preserved. I know that uh, Jay doesn't like to mention, you know, certain things like uh, the Council of Nicaea. He doesn't like it because, you know, 300 years afterwards, Jay, that is when they started to discard, you know, hundreds of the Gospels. And uh, he doesn't like the gospel of Barnabas because really it refuses his own ideas. Anyway, I'll hand over to my colleague because I've taken up three minutes. Yeah. There we go. Yes, yeah, so uh, just to answer one of the questions that uh, was mentioned before uh, by Don, I believe, he asked who has that power to, uh, to change the appearance of, of one of the, the soldiers uh, to replace uh, Jesus. Well, of course, the only one who has that power is God, is Allah. And that's not the reason why Christianity was born. Jesus taught everybody that there is none word of worship except for the Creator, Allah. He never said anybody told anybody to worship Him as a human being, or His mother, or, or, or as Maryam or Mary. He never asked anybody to worship idols. He called the people not to worship a cross, but to worship the Creator God, and that's what His uh, companions, His close companions, they were left upon. But just as Moses, when he left the, his his people for forty days, the people, in fact, he came back and found them worshiping idols. And in the same way, when Allah lifted, uh, raised Jesus up, the people after him, centuries, centuries after that, the people, they changed. And they changed the Bible, they changed their belief, and they started to worship a cross, an idol, to worship Jesus as the Son of God himself. 
uh, and left what was uh, what was revealed to Jesus himself. Just like every generation before, which is why God would send prophet after prophet after prophet to renew and to remind the people, come on, leave these idols and come back to Islam. And that's exactly what Muhammad, the prophet, peace be upon him, was. He was the final messenger to all of mankind to tell the people, take away all of these distortions that have been found in your books. All of the changes made by your rabbis and priests to the Bible and to the, to the Torah and come on to the truth. Go back to the original foundation. That is, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. That there's none worthy of worship beside Allah. And that now Muhammad has arrived, that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah for you. And he, he said, what? Well, and let's not worship each other. Let's not take each other as, as laws instead of Allah to be worshipped. Let's not take human beings to claim that he is the son of God or he is a God himself, a man of flesh. Rather, uh, let's turn to the creator of man and worship only him and not turn to anybody else. And plus, you know, uh, as we mentioned already about the, the Bible and the different versions you know, the, and the contradictions with that, the biggest problem with the Bible is that it contradicts this basic call of every single prophet. Where you find in one part of the Bible, the call that one is Allah is God. God is one, sorry. God is one and has no partners. You find somewhere else what has been changed and been added that God in fact is three. Or God has a son. God has a, a partner. And this is what has been purified by the coming of the Qur'an. And that's how we know it's the truth. That's how we know that it must be from God. Because there are no man-made books that you know, people, they invent a religion, call Five people seconds. only to worship God alone. Rather, they will associate partners with him and claim divinity for themselves. Okay, the moving being. on. Thank you very much. Uh, as we're resetting the clock for our last section, that is our six-minute conclusion from our Christians. Again, 248-416-1300 is the number. We will be taking your calls. We've been uh, mentioning it throughout our program, but we will, as we're finishing up here with our uh, official uh, uh, presentation of our uh, positions from either side, the Christian and, non and, and Muslim position, uh, just know that number again, 248-416-1300. Jay, we're going to start with you. We're going ahead and have you start our next uh, six, the last, the final six-minute segment with your conclusion from when you and Don. Today, the, the whole debate that we've been asked is, what does history tell us about how Islam began? It didn't take long for Unjim and our good friend Mizan to get off subject. And it's great to see their passion. I love the passion of both Unjim and Mizan. But they've missed the historical question. I don't think anybody's really convinced. I'm certainly not convinced yet that there was a religion created or sent down, a book that was sent down to a man named Muhammad, was written in a, over or compiled by companions over a period of 22 to 23 years, was then written down at the time of Uthman in 650. I still am not convinced that Islam even began at that time. I'm not hearing anything historical tonight. All I'm hearing is the, the same old material that we're getting, the classical account that we get from every Muslim in every debate, and that is, this is what we've been taught if you would only come and uh, read the Quran and follow the Prophet Muhammad, you too will see the truth. Folks, don't, don't be swayed by that. The great thing about all religions is that they have to pass this historical test. Christianity is the only one that has had 200 years of dealing with a historical problem. Biblical criticism created in the 1800s aimed at the Bible is, was a great criticism, and we passed every one of those criticisms. That's why we can hand over heart say we know who wrote which book, we know when they were written, we know who Jesus Christ is, we know when he was lived, when he lived, we know when he died, we know when he rose again. All of this is based on not only eyewitness account but external hostile accounts. We talked about them already tonight. That's why the Bible and the person of Jesus Christ are the only ones that are not dependent on oral tradition. You're hearing an awful lot of that tonight. Almost everything we've heard tonight is dependent on two to three hundred years of oral tradition to support who this man Muhammad is and the book that he was revealed. See, we also are dependent on a book and a man. Our book is the New Testament. The man is Jesus Christ. The by far the more historical on almost every category. I wish Muslims would start to answer those questions. Don't just give us all these plethora of of memorized responses on how great this book is, when we know that this book is not that great, the Quran is not that great. It is full of contradictions. I could give you about 220 if we had time. Come on back to the book that has passed this test, this historical test. 
the Bible. Come on back to the man behind the Bible, Jesus Christ. He did live. He did die. He did rise again, and he did it for you. That's why God did have to come to earth. It wasn't that we created God out of a man. God came down, took on human form. See, our God can do that. That's the God that I don't see in the Quran. I, I, Allah is incapable of entering time and space. we got about three minutes left, Jay. We'll let it go and give it to Don now. God bless okay. you. It's been Thank great you, talking. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Uh, what I put forth was that the, uh, the setting of the Quran reveals not Mecca, but Petra as the most likely candidate based on geography and weather patterns and based on car caravan trade routes. Mecca was virtually unknown uh, for centuries, uh, even centuries after uh, the advent of Islam. I pointed out that the direction of Qibla, the direction of prayer, started towards uh, Petra and then eventually after 200 years became set upon uh, Mecca, not as the, uh, the traditional tales tell us. Uh, we, I asked, why, why would Allah cause another person to look like Jesus? And I didn't really get a clear answer on that. Uh, if, if, the, if the Christian's false belief in the death and resurrection of Jesus was caused by Allah, then Allah is responsible for the birth of Christianity. If all the earliest Muslims, uh, the earliest Jesus follower Muslims, all turned away, then it's not a very good testimony to the fidelity of of God as far as taking care of his people or his book. If the Tarat, the Injil, the, the Psalms as we call them, if they all were sent down by God and then corrupted, why did he suddenly figure out how to keep it from being corrupted? Why did he have a problem with that? And I finally I'd like to say that I was asked why does, uh, uh, why does uh, God send down Jesus? Was it for the people of Israel or was it for the world? Well, that's answered in the Bible itself. It's from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's the message I want Muslims around the world to hear, that there is a chance. You don't have to live in fear and trepidation that maybe you'll end up in Gehenna, maybe you'll make Jannah. You don't have to live in that kind of fear. You can know salvation. You can know it now. Just confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Quran was written to specifically to keep Muslims from even considering that idea. The unforgivable sin isn't to blaspheme Allah or to blaspheme Muhammad. It's to ascribe a partner. If I say Jesus is the Son of God, I've, I've, uh, I've just spoken shirk. I've just spoken the unforgivable sin within Islam. Why is that? Why is it so important to deny Jesus? Because Jesus said on that day, you know, those who deny me, I will deny them. And I want my Muslim brothers and sisters to know that there is a chance for eternal life. Seconds. And uh, that's fine with me. Well, uh, what a program. I tell you what, I always get a kick out of when the truth is exalted. And uh, unfortunately, those from other religions uh, sometimes show a good deal of pride and, and try to uh, claim well, as Anjum did. Uh, we've won the debate, it's very clear, uh, but in fact they hadn't won the debate at all. The truth was clear that those men did not have answers about the origin of Islam, the origin of Muhammad, or how there are so many different Arabic manuscripts of the Quran, things that uh, Muslims have been denying for years, and now it's coming to the surface that uh, Islam is not. Uh, this perfect religion by any means. Of course, we as Christians know that, but sometimes we're afraid to speak with Muslims. Sometimes we're afraid to uh, talk about the religion of Islam because we don't know, but we need to know. Don't be afraid of the truth. That's what the Trinity Channel is all about, exalting the truth, Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Of course, no one can go to the Father except through Him. Here at the Trinity Channel, we rejoice that we're able to bring you this broadcast and we pray it's been a blessing to you. If you'd like to know more about our ministry, if you'd like to watch more clips, engaging clips, what you saw was just part of the debate. There's a great deal more uh, wonderful uh, footage that you can watch 
uh, through our website, www.trinitychannel.com. Certainly you can go on the internet, YouTube, and other places, and you can find our clips. You can just type in a search for Trinity Channel, and you can look for these uh, programs, world-class Christian apologetics from top-notch Christian apologists around the world, many with their PhDs, others who have ministered in Muslim countries, have debated Muslims, have worked among Muslims for years. Uh, indeed, we find that... Uh, our programming is a treasure trove of apologetic material that you can uh, be unlikely to exhaust unless you have a great deal of time. And we're committed to doing that which many ministries shy away from, which is to forthrightly bring forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it alone is the power of salvation. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, like the Apostle Paul said. For it alone is the power of salvation, the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And we're not ashamed and we're not afraid to expose false religion, Islam in particular, in a way of comparison and contrast. And as we see, the uh, history and criticism does not bear out even the real existence of the historical man Muhammad some 200 years before there's outside sources confirming anything or speaking of Islam and Muhammad. Whereas in Christianity, we find Jesus Christ being mentioned by contemporaries who were not believers, but historians like Josephus just a little bit later and others, Pliny, uh, we find, and other historians who point out the fact that uh, Jesus of Nazareth was a true historic figure and indeed his tomb was empty, praise God. I pray that you've enjoyed this broadcast. Please go to our website, www.trinitychannel.com to learn more about this world-changing ministry that is exalting Christ and exposing falsehood around the world. We're the only one doing this in this way. I truly believe that. I pray that you would pray for us let others know about our broadcast and about our ministry. The gospel's free, but preaching the gospel and exalting Christ on a channel like this certainly is not. Please pray about giving to our ministry. You can contact us by calling us at 248-416-1300, or you could send a gift to our uh, mailing address that you find on the screen. Thank you so much for watching Christianity, Islam, and America. I'm your host, Pastor Joseph. Look for our program next time, which will show more shocking, exhilarating, and yet enlightening and insightful information about the two largest world's religion, and of course, about the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Until then, good night and God bless. Praise the Lord. We hope you are enjoying today's program, which is just a small sample of our treasure trove of classic Christian apologetic television broadcasts. ABN and the Trinity Channel have been producing world-class Christian apologetic programming for years, featuring the world's top Christian apologists. If you would like to see more of our programming, you can watch the Trinity Channel live 24-7 at www.trinitychannel.com. Please pray for us to persevere in exposing false religions and lifting high the name of Jesus. And if you would please let others know about our ministry.